Welcome back to the World Base Builder channel. Today's challenge is to create steel and we are creating plant matter in the form of switchgrass. The recipe for steel calls for three parts iron, one part carbon. Uh, so we will be using the plant matter to become charcoal, which will be our carbon element. Most people use three 50 gram chunks of iron and then one 50 gram chunk of coal or charcoal or carbon in this case. So to that end, we have switchgrass. Now there's a secret to switchgrass in that it actually creates 15 hay for each plant. So if you grow it straight from seed, it will grow 15 plant matter, 15 grams of plant matter that can be turned into 15 grams of carbon. Uh, I don't think any other plant has that high of an output of plant matter, so we are going to be using switchgrass. If you do not harvest it all the way down to the dirt, it will grow back and create a seed a little bit more quickly than it would if it went to the full 15, but you only get one gram of actual plant matter and one seed, and then you replant or you let it continue to grow. Uh, so it doesn't produce as much if you grow it, uh, allow it to continue to grow rather than growing it from seed. So we'll be uh, waiting for the switchgrass to mature, harvest the hay, and then we will turn that into charcoal in our electro furnace. And then we will eventually feed that into a standard furnace with iron and create steel. So the base is a little bit warm. It's above 30 degrees centigrade. So I'm going to try and cool it down to bring it down to the ideal temperature range for plants. Uh, that is between 20 degrees centigrade and 30 degrees centigrade for most plants. So what I'm doing is pumping an external atmosphere into the filtration pipe system, and that helps cool the overall base. Uh, it is minus 179 degrees Celsius outside, so that's usually pretty effective. It does take a few tries though to kind of fine tune it. It's not automated. This is all manual at this point. Once I can start printing out ICs uh, using the advanced electronics printer, uh, I will try to automate as much of this as possible. One thing I've noticed is that if you're trying to fill canisters using the uh, tank by inserting your small canisters into the larger tank, it can't be mounted in the tank mount. So you have to unmount it, stick your tanks in there one at a time, and then remount it to hopefully refill it with whatever gases you were taking out of the larger tank. As you can see here, the Stationpedia outlines several factors that influence plant growth. Uh, temperature, pressure, lighting, and gas mixes are all factors, and all the details are in the Stationpedia. As I wait for the plants to grow and mature, I'm going to go ahead and 
Make sure that the base temperature and pressures are in approximately the best ranges they can be for the plants, but also take some time to try and reinforce and strengthen my oxygen production. I'm going to reroute some of the piping and try to direct more of it into the tank for future use. So the small furnace was completed, a venting ductwork fuel was supplied, we created charcoal and then with that created steel. We also went on to create solder, constantan and electrum so that now we can create an electronic printer mod to take our electronic printer to tier 2. And once that's complete we'll be able to then create the advanced furnace using uh, other advanced ingredients. But unfortunately, did not capture the video of us creating those first tier of alloys. Uh, but we will capture that we have the modification and we'll upgrade the electronics printer. Uh, once we've done that, using the other alloys we created, we'll start printing out the advanced furnace. So for convenience, I've placed a canister refill station inside the base, but I've also included a canister vacuum. Basically, I just took up a volume pump so that I can put canisters into and then vacuum them down to zero pascals and then remove them from the, the vacuum and then place them into the refill recharger with the gases that I want, uh, in this case oxygen. This basically helps to uh, ensure that I don't have any contaminants in the canister before I refill it and thereby guarantees that I have the correct and intended mix of gases in each canister. I'd moved the furnace outside and co-located it next to the recycler in the centrifuge. I then went ahead and enclosed it. Uh, I'm not planning on actually having this to be breathable atmosphere with all the pollutants and volatiles that come out of the furnace and other gases. Probably isn't worth it to try and keep this breathable. But it does work as a temperature sink and I might use it either to dump or remove heat from in the future since heat seems to be hard to come by in Titan. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just go ahead and clean up some ores and do a little bit of processing of the ores and then try to extract anything I can use at the moment and then feed those into the arc furnace for future use uh, as the ingots basically dump inside the base. I also need to go out and collect a, a bit more water ice so I can keep all of the various devices running that are reliant on the fuel that comes from the electrolysis of the water ice. So I will go ahead and harvest some of that and then 
continue on with the mission. utility room was building up a bit of pressure so I put a gas regulator on the wall just to vent the excess pressure to the outside environment. I'll go ahead and restock the electrolyzer here to continue my oxygen supply. I also double check the oxygen filters. They're a little bit harder to reach now that they're behind the arc furnace but for the moment they look okay. I did remove the oxygen tank here. I'm just using the pipe itself that goes from the electrolyzer uh, into the gas filters for oxygen and then the pipe that goes into the pressure regulator that properly pressurizes the canisters. Uh, the tanks, the pipes themselves hold quite a bit so for the moment I'm just using those as buffers and storage and the oxygen tank wasn't really required it was more in the way than beneficial so I removed it stuck in the corner and I may use it in the future. It is an insulated tank so definitely will have some value. Uh, but for the moment, I'm just using the pipes as reservoirs. thing I did want to point out here if you turn on a device and it is showing that it does not have enough power it flashes uh, it gives kind of strange behavior but you check your overall power systems for your base and here I can see I have at least three blocks so you know 40 to 60 percent power it's not a function of the overall base power available, it's a function of that overloaded circuit. You have a transformer that keeps you from burning out the wires, but it maxes out at 5,000 watts. So then you have devices that are drawing more than 5,000 watts. So the issue is that you probably don't have enough power feeds into that circuit. And what you'll need to do is break that circuit down into smaller circuits that can then supply energy to all the high demand appliances separately or in smaller groups so that you don't exceed that 5,000 watts. So here I'm finally figuring out that I can use the connecting pipe between the pollutant filter and the volatile filter as a reservoir and also fine tune the pressure within the room by basically playing the two filter devices off of each other. So here there's no pollutants in the connecting one because it's downstream of the pollutant filter. But I can turn on the pollutant filter without turning on the volatile filter and use that to reduce the pressure within the room. Uh, and then I can shut off the pollutant filter, turn on the volatile filter, and now I'm taking out of that reservoir pipe between the two filters and I'm slowly increasing the pressure in the room by pumping, at this point, pollutant and volatile free atmosphere into the room. And now I can fine tune and control the pressure within the room by basically playing these two filter devices off against each other. Um, I can run them independently because I have the one-way gates. Uh, and so this can still draw in atmosphere from the room if needed, but typically it's just taking from that extra pressure, the 20 to 40 megapascals that's in that connecting pipe.
I think anyone that's worked with one of these gas fueled furnaces knows there's a bit of an arc to it. I had a bit of volatile rich mixture here, so I tried to put some oxygen into it. Um, but you also find that adjusting the pressure and sometimes adjusting it downward will actually cause it to heat up if there's still oxygen volatiles in the furnace. I think what happens is they increase the concentrations of the two so they're able to react more effectively and also with less mass in the furnace by reducing the pressure. Uh, it actually allows it to heat up more effectively because it's heating up less matter that's within the furnace. Um, so there is a, a bit of a, a fine tuning here. Uh, a lot of times too if you're starting up a cold furnace it's usually easier and better to start up with very low pressure, very low mass in the furnace because then the fuel they introduce will have more of an impact on both the uh, pressure and the temperature. The other thing you can do, and uh, I'm, I'm doing here, is you can also introduce external gases. So you don't have to fill the entire furnace with volatiles if you're looking for a specific pressure, for example. You can fill it up basically with just, you know, kind of atmospheric gases, you know, basically free gases. Uh, get it up into the pressure range you're looking for, and then you know, introduce volatiles and oxygen to then get the temperature you're looking for. So if all you're looking for is to get to a certain pressure range, sometimes it's easier and better just to fill it with inert gases uh, that are easier to come by, uh, as opposed to the fuel, which you know, I have to electrolyze from ice, so that's a little bit less uh, common, as opposed to all of the atmosphere that I have uh, available to me. Now this atmosphere does have uh, volatiles in it already, so sometimes introducing just a little bit of oxygen with the atmosphere could also be used you know, directly as fuel and, and used to start heating up the furnace. So one final note on manually controlling a furnace is that the exhaust is sometimes as important as the intake. You can control the pressure pretty effectively by using the exhaust. Most of the time it leaves the temperature alone unless by reducing the pressure you actually kick off a reaction, in which case then the temperature can start climbing. But sometimes that's exactly what the desired state is, is to reduce pressure and increase temperature. But uh, yeah, just remember that the exhaust is uh, a key part of controlling the furnace. So for some reason I am trying to create stellite here in a regular furnace. I sometimes call it a small furnace. Uh, so quick rule of thumb, if it's a single ingredient basically trying to turn ores into ingots, you can use the arc furnace. If you have two ingredients, you need to move up to the regular furnace or the small furnace. Uh, if it requires three ingredients like stellite, you need the advanced furnace. Uh, so uh, one, two, three rule of thumb. Uh, Obviously, the advanced furnace can do any of the ones that are below it, you know, three ingredients, two ingredients, or one ingredient. The regular furnace can take two ingredients or one ingredient. So if you're just turning uh, ores into ingots, you can certainly use uh, any of the furnaces for that. But once you start getting up to uh, three ingredients, you should be in, in the advanced furnace. Uh, however, it's been a little while since I've worked from the ground up. I have to relearn parts of stationers. Uh, in this case, stationers-wiki.com is your friend. It has all this information there. Uh, it also points it out in the Stationpedia. If you pull up the Stationpedia, you can scroll down and it tells you what devices you can create each of the alloys in. So while you can get the correct pressures and temperatures for the alloy, and you can see the contents are there, uh, it will not actually generate the alloys that we're looking for because we are in the wrong device. Um, 
If you look up a, uh, a two element or, or a two ingredient like constantan, that would actually be created and could be created within the small furnace, the regular furnace. But once you move up to a three ingredient alloy like stellite, yeah, it's not going to be generated. It's just going to sit there in the furnace. Uh, and it says so right here. If you scroll down, you would not see the normal furnace back on the constantan. If you scroll down, you'd actually see the regular furnace as an option, as a device that can create it. But that is not the case for Stellite. So, uh, yes, it's pretty obvious here. I need to make a, an advanced furnace. And I will realize that shortly. So the station PDA actually outlined thing gets pretty well here. If it's a super alloy, you require the advanced furnace. If it's a normal alloy in the middle group, you just require the small or regular furnace. And if it's just the basic at the bottom, an arc furnace will do. So you can work up from here, you know, basic requires arc furnace or better, alloys require the medium or regular furnace or better, and the super alloys require the advanced furnace. So it's grouped pretty clearly here. Uh, just sometimes you just have to make that connection between which device to which alloy it is you're trying to do. So we're going to move away from our adventures with the small furnace and then come back and address our power situation. On Titan, especially in the early game, power is always a challenge. So at least my approach was to constantly build more and bigger wind turbines until I could get to a continuous and constant and reliable state of fuel and then I could start switching over to gas fuel generators and potentially sterling engines to start powering the base but I am not there yet so I am still building wind turbines So I'll skip some of the boring in-between stuff and jump to material creation and gathering and then go outside and start to expand this base. Uh, as it's become pretty obvious, we need an advanced furnace to start creating some of these super alloys. And the reason I'm focused on Stellite right now is that I want to create the large station battery. I have a fairly large wind farm at this point and I want to effectively capture all of that energy and extend used to when the wind is not blowing. Uh, as it is now, my uh, ability to absorb excess energy is pretty limited. I'd also like to move the batteries down to someplace a little bit visible. It's a little bit of a pain to keep going outside and looking up at the uh, roof to see what my power situation is. I could create instrumentation down in the base, but an easy way to do that is just create the batteries at a level where I can see them, you know, through the windows of the base itself. There's plenty of glass on the base itself, so situating a battery someplace where it would be pretty visible is uh, not difficult to do. Uh, and Basically the instrumentation is built right into the battery with the bar graph. So that's going to be my approach, uh, but to that end I'm going to build the advanced furnace and then go after Stellite.
I did need to run back into the base because uh, the furnace also requires additional items such as electronics. So I didn't have electronics with me, so I went inside and rapidly created some electronics uh, so that I could bring them out and also took care of the hydration and food needs while I was there. Uh, and then back outside to continue the construction of the advanced furnace. So with some of the uh, changes to the game, uh, people have moved away from using the steel frames as an enclosure for their advanced furnaces. Uh, they changed the frames from being perfect insulators, uh, which would retain heat in the furnace uh, pretty effectively. Uh, once that ability was removed, now people tend to use atmosphere around the furnace to help control and insulate the furnace and maintain its temperature at a predictable rate. So that's what I'm attempting to do here is basically build a room around the furnace and then hopefully maintain the pressure and the temperature within that room. So here I've realized that I need to add some controls to help control the pressure within that room. Uh, I expect that as the furnace heats up that the pressure within that room will build up as the air heats and expands. And it's also a good idea to create chimneys uh, to move any exhaust air or atmosphere you have uh, to a little bit away from you, otherwise you'll find yourself being blown all over the planet. So. Uh, it's always a good idea to try and vent, uh, especially high pressure gases, to areas where it won't directly impact you, uh, if at all possible. So now the advanced furnace is all connected up. It has a fuel supply and electricity. And so we are just throwing in our reagent mixes from our previous failures with the regular furnace. And obviously the advanced furnace has the added benefit of having your volume pumps built right in. So you have your exhaust and your intake right there on the front panel. So it does make it uh, pretty easy to adjust and get to the target temperatures. And with only a little bit of effort, I can get this into the right pressure ranges and temperature ranges for stellite. And so the long sought stellite is uh, about to be created. And moments, there it is, Stella.
So iron-based walls and windows don't really work well around the advanced furnace. Uh, the pressure delta that a iron wall can take is only 200 kilopascals. Uh, even steel walls would only go up to 300. And I don't have fine enough control around this to really make these effective. So this is probably going to have to be replaced by a steel frame. Uh, even though the steel frame is no longer a perfect insulator, uh, it is strong enough and I don't believe pressure is actually a concern inside of a steel frame. Uh, so this is a, a temporary setup at best and we'll go ahead and replace this once these all blow out. <laughs> it's not really worth the effort to try and maintain this, especially for the initial starter base. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, upgrade this later or downgrade it depending on how you look at it. Filter low. So if I was going back and starting this scenario again, I would have focused a lot more on the integrated circuits. You could see here that it only requires gold, which is directly mineable from the environment. Uh, steel, electrum, and solder are two ingredient alloys, so it could have been created within the regular furnace. So if I was going to go back again, I would have created that integrated circuit ecosystem, had better controls from the beginning. Uh, you'll see that even the uh, integrated circuit socket uh, is also fairly easy to come by. The housing only requires copper, steel, and solder. Again, all easily obtainable. Once you have that charcoal being created and you can create steel, uh, the other ingredients are not that much of a challenge. So I would have had uh, more controls up front and earlier if I'd focused on creating that IC ecosystem using just the regular furnace. So that's my lesson learned from this little adventure so far. And with that, I appreciate you watching and more to come in future episodes. Thank you for watching.